Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Building a Nation with Team Canada and today we bring to you the first game in the 2021 North American Nations League. Now, this is an important tournament. All the tournaments we've got over the next year are important but Nations League I might say it's one of the most important mainly because of who we're playing and the stakes. Basically this is a do or die type situation when it comes to the Nations League because you've got four games against two teams to qualify. First place qualifies and that's it. So if you're not first, doesn't really matter. I mean, if you finish third, you get dropped down to qualification, but that's not really our concern. We're concerned with moving on to reach the semifinals of this competition. And in order to get to those semifinals, we have to go through Mexico. Now, we just recently qualified over Mexico, but we didn't really beat Mexico. We sort of, I mean, they kind of lost the group, if you, if you want to be honest about it. We didn't necessarily beat them. We did manage a draw in our last game against them, so that's basically how we outmaneuvered them but we haven't gone out and beat them yet and if we like I've said before if we can't beat Mexico then it's hard for us to compete on the international stage because there are a lot of teams outside of North America who are better than Mexico or at least as good as they are and if we can't compete with them then we can't compete on the world stage. So this is important because of who we're going up against and because we got no room for error. We can't wait for them to lose. I mean, they're not going to lose against Antigua and Barbuda. If they do, then something is seriously wrong with Mexico. Now, if you're a Mexican fan right now, a player or coach, you might think something's considerably wrong as it is because Mexico has dropped fairly precipitously they are down to 26th in the world that's pretty bad especially when you look who is above them both usa and jamaica are now ranked higher than mexico that is i mean that has to be horrifying for a mexican fan they they, they can't stand that they are numero uno they are top of north america and right now that crown is slipping off their heads so we have to expect that they're, they're going to be angry and they're going to come into this tournament with some fire and wanting to prove once again that they're the best and they can't let these upstarts you know push them off the top of the mountain so hopefully that's what we're dealing with we're dealing with a fired up mexico who's bringing their best and a team that we've got to deal with. Let's get to our matches. Let's see what team we've called up, see what games are going on right now. You've got El Salvador versus Honduras, St. Vincent versus Cayman. I guess we can even look at the rest of the Nations League, right? We haven't even looked to see who's who and what's what in the Nations League. We know what our group is, but there are four other groups. So we got El Salvador, Honduras, Martinique interesting group el salvador honduras you know they've got history there costa rica cuba usa that's a tough group costa rica and usa they've got a big rivalry especially when usa goes down to costa rica they've got you know massive fan support down there and then guadalupe jamaica panama probably jamaica's to win or lose that fourth group but panama they are tricky. They can always play that defensive style and stymie the other teams in their group and, you know, pull out a victory. So we're looking, you know, it's going to be some interesting teams that move on. It's probably Jamaica. And then USA Costa Rica is probably a toss up. Honduras most likely will go through. But anytime they play El Salvador, right, you never know. That, that sort of rivalry thing might uh, pop up. So we got a lot of interesting matchups to go through. And here we are. Ours is kind of the least interesting matchup, unfortunately. Antigua Barbuda. We can take a look at these guys. I don't know if it's pronounced Barbuda or Barbuda. I don't know. Um, I'm going to pronounce it Barbuda for now. They've got a few players. Ken Smith playing for the Hoppers. 18-year-old right wing. 
You know, not what I would call a tremendous player. He's got good teamwork and work rate. Who is their best player is, of course, their goalkeeper. Malone Romeo, 25 years old, playing for Millwall over in England. This guy is pretty good. He can stop some shots. He's very athletic. He's very quick for a keeper. He's probably a sweeper keeper at 5'9", 160 pounds, yeah um wait is he no he's okay they did it to me again they did it to me again where they switched the positions around so he's a right back i was wondering why a goalkeeper had corners um so yeah right back is a little bit different game plan than a goalkeeper so i guess it's fine that he's five foot nine no problems there but he's a good player we have to watch out for him he's valued at ten and a half million uh, you know, then their central defense, maybe not so good. Left back, another guy with English uh, heritage, 27 years old. Zane Francis Angle. He looks okay as well. So they've got some players, but I don't know that they're going to be uh, what I would call stiff opposition for us. We are heavy, heavy uh, betting favorites right now. Uh, yeah, 14 to 1 odds is pretty huge. 20 to 1 odds. So, you know, if you're going to put some money down, you want to make a couple of bucks, you get 20 to 1 odds for Antigua Barbuda. I mean, I wouldn't suggest it, but you never know. Stranger things have happened. Uh, they do have a head coach. That's always good. Ralston Williams, head coach. Parham FC, head coach. He was also their national head coach back in 2004. I mean, he's okay. He's got man management, determination, working with youngsters, so that's good. But he seems more like an under-20s coach than a senior team coach. But anyway, we're going to get to our team selection today. We are going to go back to the Z formation. Got some new guys in there. Again, we're, this is the 12-man rotation formula. So we've got you know a full bench of 12 players. Some, uh, some guys you definitely recognize. We do have some injuries and suspensions. Now, the big one here, Lucas Cavallini, is suspended. And basically, I brought him back on the team for this game because he's suspended for one game. We'll have that be this game, and which we don't particularly need Lucas Cavallini for. So, uh, you know, he can basically just ride out this game on the bench, serve his suspension, and he can come back for our next game. and should be all good. You know, some, uh, some guys from Vancouver have made the team. Hundle, of course, he's, he's in the reserves today. Uh, Cab Calloway, Charles Andreas Brim. The speedster on the left wing, he's made it in there. Basically, he's there because Alfonso Davies is injured again. He was injured during the Olympics. He's injured again for this game, so we might be running into a little bit of a problem with Alfonso Davies uh, as a bit of an injury prone. We got Daniel Lovitz as sort of an insurance policy. He can play left wing or left back. Um, Piet is back, Arfield is back, Rocco Romeo, who's been playing pretty well for us in Vancouver, is back as well. He's up to three and a half star player. Jaguer has not been getting any playing time. He's unhappy with Montreal. He wants to move on, so we might have to step in and do something for Jaguer's career if he's unable to move on. Then we brought back Straith. Uh, he's just you know, a versatile central defender, a guy who can play all over the place. He's 30 years old now, so he's not going to get too many more runs out with the team. He does have 53 caps for Team Canada, but he's a good, solid leader. And then you know our goalies, Carducci is back for another run. He's 24 years old now, uh, still playing at Cavalry FC. And then Jason Lutweiler, the guy that we convinced to come play for us. Not playing a tremendous amount over in Blackburn, but he's still by far the second best keeper in Canada. So let's submit that and get to the starting lineups. Oh, we got to take Lucas Cavallini out. We can't have a suspended guy 
on the bench. That's fine. That's fine. It's, it's another one of those times when I took a break from recording. Coming back, feeling good, energized, ready to go. And look at this. Antigua has dropped way back into a 4-5-1. They're going to try to play defensive on us, and it's hard to... Uh, Hard to disagree with that strategy. They got Murtog here in the middle. Kieran Murtog, one of their veterans, 32 years old. You know, he's still a pretty decent player. He just, you know, physicals are going downhill a little bit. But as far as midfield as far as midfielders go, he's pretty good. Um, Jay Parker, their captain up top, Josh Parker. He's okay, you know. Another 30-year-old. He's got good pace and acceleration. He's not a guy we can just ignore up top. Meanwhile, we're going with the, you know as good of a lineup as we can. Because even though we're playing Switzerland in a few days, well, not in a few days, we're playing them in a week, exactly seven days. So we got have we should have no problem with fitness. So I'm going to play a pretty decent lineup here. We got Borgian in goal, Cabra, Henry. And this guy, look at this guy, Fikeo Tomori. I've been after this guy for three years. He's playing over in England. He's got Canadian heritage. And we finally convinced him to flip and come play for Team Canada. Look at this guy. He's only six foot 165, so he's a bit of a slender kid. But he's got you know, tremendous physicals. He's decent strength, good pace, very nice acceleration for a center back. He can also play right back if necessary. Decent mentals, decent technicals. His technicals could be better, especially at this level. But he's so good physically and so solid mentally that it's just hard to, you know, it's hard to keep this guy out. So he's playing for Bristol City right now. Um, you know, I don't know if we're going to go after him and try to bring him over to MLS. I don't know that he would particularly want to come over from MLS. we got enough central defenders as it is. We've been stockpiling central defenders. But if push comes to shove, we might have to bring him in too. I don't know. Probably let him stay on the free agent market. But regardless, we got him. It's just more depth, more talent at defense. And he's also only 23 years old. So he's going to be around for this World Cup cycle and probably the next World Cup cycle as well. So we're just solidifying that central defense. Uh, we brought Nana back in at right back. Norman and Tebert, they've got a connection in the midfield, so we're going to start them together. Timoteo on the left, he's going to be playing for Alfonso Davies. He is, look at this kid. He is getting better and better by leaps and bounds. He's up to three stars. He's just, you know, across... The board just getting better and better. He's gained a little bit of pace and acceleration and, you know, everything. He's just he's just training so well right now. And that's why we brought him over, just to do that. Uh, we're bringing Jay Chapman back, attacking center mid. David on the right, and Hamilton is getting a run out. He's been playing over in the Swedish Premier League. We traded him from Vancouver in case you missed it. And he's been playing pretty well, been getting some good Good play over there. Eight starts, six goals. So he's on his way to sort of a uh, you know golden boot type situation over there in the Swedish Premier League if he keeps it up at that rate. So I think we got enough to beat these guys. We just got to do it. Let's go. Pep talk. Um, I don't know. If we play our game, we'll win. You're capable of that. Okay, nobody really cared about that. That's a little too blasé for them, I think. They wanted more of a rah-rah speech. Now, what are we going to do about this this nonsense they got going on here? Um, right wing, left wing. I guess that's all we need to do. Yeah. So, you got to assume they're going to sit back and counterattack. And try to hit the long ball over to the top. Because their striker does have some speed, as we saw. So here we are in our classic reds. Antigua, they've got an interesting color scheme going on. I don't know what that's all about. I guess it matches their flag, right? Red, 
blue. Sunrise was in their jersey somehow. They had like the pure sun of the Mediterranean. Mediterranean. I said the Mediterranean, didn't I? Yeah. Anyway, that's not what I meant. Um, the Caribbean is what I meant. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, let's try to forget about that and look for a highlight. Perhaps that would be lovely. Uh, we should encourage our players to play a more direct game. Okay, we can do that. Uh, we do have four shots. We're controlling possession as as would be expected with them playing back. Here we go. Chapman wins a header. He's going to take it himself. Gets it to Timoteo out wide. Cabra sends one across to David. David back to Timoteo. Wins the header out wide. Interesting to send that cross into the smallest guy on the field rather than to try to get it to Hamilton. But that seems to be Hamilton's problem. He's a he's a target man that nobody likes to target. I don't understand. That's kind of why I let him go at um, Vancouver, because we at the times that we played with a solo target man, he just wasn't doing the job. Here's Timoteo. Sends one in back post. Henry Tebert. Hamilton, there he is. Speak of the devil. But again, he wasn't the target of that cross. He wasn't anybody's target. He just did it on his own. You know, playing garbage man. Picking up the trash. So that ball was intended for Henry. Tebert, that wasn't a pass. That was a deflection. And Hamilton's just like, well, ball got to me somehow. I'll make it count. You make sure that we're on, yeah, we're on key highlights. So we don't want this game to take too long. It might get out of control, but we're going to have to let it get out of control because we need goal differential versus Mexico just in case. Timoteo, nice steal. Chapman, there we go. Somebody finally gets it to Hamilton. Okay, Chapman cleaning up the trash. We got two yellow cards out there already. Um... Antigua looks like they are getting stuck in like nobody's business. They're throwing some pretty crazy tackles at us. Nana's not going to get forward too much. That's not really his game. Okay. Hamilton triple covered. Yeah, David. David, he's going to slice through the defense. Takes the shot and scores. For some reason I had an alarm going off. At 2.57 p.m.? What was that about? I don't like that. Anyway, here's David slicing through the defense. I was going to say, just before this, their defense didn't look incredibly mobile. They looked like they were sticking to their positions, and it didn't look like they could move outside of their positions very well. Chapman with a free kick. So I think they're... Their philosophy today is just going to pack it in tight and stay in that tight box and see if they can uh, avoid the goals, tackle really hard, and send on the counterattack. But I don't know that that's going to work against us. Now, I don't know why the assistant coach has told us to pat, you know, have longer passes. But it seemed to work because when we made that change... Suddenly we got two goals out of it. So let's go to the dressing room. Pep talk. Very pleased. Keep it up. Let's go. I, you know, I think. Let's go positive. Let's just keep the ball. You know, if they're going to let us keep the ball, let's keep it. We're not go full time wasting, but... Uh, no need to let them hit us on the counterattack while we just relentlessly attack them. So we're probably going to score on set pieces and stuff anyway. There we go. Nana sends one in. Norman gets it at the top of the semi circle. He fires one wide. Wide and high. Need to stop banging into the desk here. I might be making some sounds. So if you heard some sounds on the microphone, that's probably what it was. My chair banging against the table. 
All right, we got a ton of yellow cards. I don't know what this is about. At the 60-minute mark, we'll probably sub a few of these guys out. Cabra, Tebert, I would assume, would be the two most logical guys to get out there. So we bring in Lovitz. Lovitz is another guy we traded away from Vancouver. Ended up in FC Cincinnati. Been playing decently there. And uh, for Tebert, I do. Uh, hmm. Guess we'll bring in Arfield. Arfield needs all the playing time he can get. He's getting close to the end of his career. He's not playing a heck of a lot these days. I'm pretty sure the Scottish League is going on right now. It's July, so they should be they should be playing. Maybe they're on break or something. Summer break? Do they get summer break there? I don't think so, but. But he's not playing. He's getting near the end of his career. He's probably not going to be on this team for too much longer. I mean, we got Mark Anthony K sitting there who we had to leave off of this team to bring our field on. And it's probably the last time we're going to do that. So, you know, you're probably going to see Mark Anthony K taking our field's spot from now on, at least for the next couple of years. Here we go. 83 minutes. Looks like we're probably going to get out of here 2-0, which isn't great. It's not It's not a great score. It's good enough. Good enough. Now, the real game is going to actually be the friendly that we're going to be playing in. Here's Frederick. He could make. He could have made things interesting with a goal there. Yeah, that could actually uh, be somewhat harmful to our chances if, if they score a goal here. All right, stoppage time just about up. David has it. Getting forward. He gets it stolen. They're probably going to blow the whistle here. There it is. There it is. Norman didn't even have to kick it. So there we go. Dominant performance. 21 shots. 7 on target. 15 fouls. That's a lot of fouls going on against a team like Antigua that we were clearly superior to, but they gave it a good fight. They weren't going to go down uh, without swinging. So Murtog played okay, I guess. 6.9 miles covered. That's pretty good for the old man. Jonathan David with a goal. Who got the player of the match? Jonathan David, 8.3 and a goal. Chapman with the assist. Hamilton with the other goal on a rebound, so no assist on the Hamilton goal. All right. Pep talk, very pleased. Hand over. Let's go. So, I'm going to fast forward to the Switzerland friendly, and we're going to get that in, and we're going to see how this team fares against you know, major European competition. So we shall see. I mean, they're not upper echelon, but they're pretty good. So we're going to pause it here and come back. Okay, we're back. It's been a pretty uh, exciting week here. Very entertaining. Lots of news. Uh, you can see from the global news here, Peter Vermees fired by New York City. That's no good. Uh, in this game overall new york city has a reputation of firing their head coaches quite a lot remember the first time i ever played football manager back in fm 16 i got fired in the first half of the first season by new york city so got sort of a uh, sort of a grudge against new york city ever since and how about this harry kane encourages mo sala to leave liverpool in big money deal how about that, Liverpool fans? Mo Salah to Tottenham in 2021. Hmm, I don't know about that. How, what does old Mo look like these days? Uh, Mohamed Salah. Yeah. Yeah, he's pretty good. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. I don't want to look at that anymore. That's just depressing. But, yeah. There's that going on. But, um... In other news, say news closer to home, there have been a few deals going on. Um, Vancouver proposes a deal with Montreal involving Thomas 
Milier Jiguer or Tomas Milier Jiguer offering 1.5 million and two fourth round picks. The deal turned out a little different. Take a look at our transfers. So we ended up getting, uh, well, we ended up getting Jaguar. We sent them 1.5 million plus 65K in targeted allocation, plus an international slot, plus a fourth round pick. So we, we overpaid for Jaguar. He is an international player, I suppose, but we're going to figure out what to do with him eventually. And basically, uh, we made another trade. I don't know why that trade's not showing up. But we're sort of swapping central defenders around as we traded Kamiri to Real Salt Lake for $1.9 million in general allocation money. So we basically broke even in allocation money. We got a second round pick and two fourth round picks. So we basically, you know, came out on the better end of that deal. The only thing we gave up was an international slot, but we hardly have any international players left on our team anyway. So didn't doesn't really matter for us. Uh, there we go. We're basically, we're swapping out central defenders, Kamiri for Jaguar. Should be an interesting move. They're really not very similar defenders. Jaguar is more of a cerebral central defender and uh kamiri is a little bit more physical so we'll see how we can we can move those around also kamiri had you know had a good partnership with some of our other central defenders anyway here's that trade ready to go through for jaguar we will accept that live on national television so here we go we're moving into our friendly versus switzerland we got a lot, uh, lot to look at. Before we get to that, we also have to look at um, at the Nash Nations League because a lot of games have been played there. So Mexico has already played and beat Antigua, beat them three nil. So they're one goal up on us. Again, that's where that goal differential thing comes into play. We should have. Should have beat Antigua better by more, but uh, we weren't able to. So Mexico has the slight edge currently in the group. Meanwhile, Honduras is 1-0. Martinique, 1-0. How about this? El Salvador, 0-2. That's definitely a disappointing result for the Salvadorans. That's no good to lose to their rival and then to lose to martinique sort of an up-and-coming nation in uh in central america so a lot of they're an island i'm pretty sure but anyway lots of french heritage so they got a lot of players from france a few playing at some bigger comp bigger clubs uh you know they don't really have any one guy who's worth a ton of money their best player here harry Novi novillo playing at aberdeen you know, he's a pretty decent player. He's, you know, nearly MLS quality player. So, so you know, they got a decent squad. They're not they're not pushovers. Then Costa Rica is up. They played two games, one win, one draw. So they got a draw against the U.S. That leaves that group wide open with the U.S. still to play Cuba yet. So that's going to be interesting. You know, we predicted that might be the most difficult group right there. And, and there it is. A draw has thrown sort of a spanner in the works. And then down below, Jamaica has taken control of group four, kind of as we predicted. Two wins, a plus four goal differential. Panama and Guadalupe yet to play each other. So it's looking you know it's looking fairly standard what we thought would play out has played out mexico honduras jamaica and then the winner of usa costa rica uh let's see i don't know that much else okay we got to register we got to do some housekeeping here so we'll pause it again and do some housekeeping so yeah all right, Canada players will be returning to their clubs after the latest international pyramid period. 
Uh, they leave camp in a buoyant mood, and their next international period will be versus the Gold Cup. So we'll probably we'll try to show the Gold Cup in its entirety, and then come back for this and try to show this competition more as a single unit. I don't know. We'll see how that works out in the editing process. But that's it for now. Gold Cup coming up next. So until then, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.